Good morning everyone and welcome to another video. This is actually a clip I took from the end of this video, but I figured it'd be a good idea to show you up front what I'm going to be talking about, what I'm talking about I built. That way if this isn't something you're looking for, you can not waste any time. I also want you to know up front that this is not a how-to video, nor will I be showing video of how I made the pulley structure. It's just a video to show you what I made to give you something to potentially base your build off of. That being said, I hope it can at least help you in your journey towards trying to stay fit as everything seems to stay closed and time just keeps turning. try my best to walk through the steps and my thought process in making the four main components which are the wooden structure, the eye bolt connections up top, the cable system itself, and the weight pin down below. So I'm going to get right into that and hopefully you can get some ideas on how to build your own video. Okay so first things first we have the structure. I wanted to go with a uh, wooden structure because I built this when the coronavirus was just starting to ramp up and the gyms were all closing and I knew we were going to be financially tight so I wanted to make it as cheap as possible and I wanted to make it myself. So I went with the 4x4 deck post structure in order to make this kind of separate space from the power rack which I have already built in another video and actually showed how I built it. So this was just kind of an add-on to that. So the main structural components of the wooden piece of the structure are obviously it's these two side posts and if you don't have another rack you're going to need the other side as well. And then up top there's the bracing from side to side and front to back. The top is the most important because there's a lot of force between these two um, cables and the pulleys. So when you start stacking up weight on the pin all the forces have to transfer through each piece in order for you to successfully put weight, well, lift weight. And if you decide that you want to do a bottom attachment, you're going to need quite a bit of weight to countermeasure it, and you're also going to need a sturdy structure for these pins to attach to. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to slowly pan over it. So maybe you pick up something that you see and I'll kind of talk about my ideas what I did and what I think I should have done had I known I was going to be using this for that long. So first off, biggest pieces are these deck posts that run up to the top. And then you can see the difference between the squat rack and the cable structure, uh, mostly because it was just a money thing. If I, looking back now, I wish I would have done this 4x4 post for the entire structure over here with something like this in between going across. But you can get away with doing two by fours. The main reason I say I should have used the four by four posts is because, is because if you get in here, you can see how the eye bolt goes through and then it goes through this two by four up top and that's how I get the rigidity for the cable. Now, with the system I went with, where it falls short is that it goes through this top piece here, this top uh, two inch wide piece, well, inch and a half, I guess, and that's where it gets all its strength from, and if I had used the 4x4 post, it would be twice as thick, so there'd be a little bit more kind of lateral bracing here, because there'd be that extra thickness of the bolt going through. So if you, can Im if you can imagine this thickness of the bolt going through versus <laughs> this thickness, you get a lot more support. That being said, here is kind of the main cross joint between the two. You can see the differences 
and just the, the quality of structure too. Um, nice angles here. You can see I kind of got that corner bracket. Those are screwed in up top. You're gonna need more tools for this. You'll probably need a miter saw. This side, I just had a blade saw. And so depending on if you have availability to tools, this style might work better than this style. And this is just kind of what the corner looks like on the inside. You can see, you know, one side goes this way, one going this way. This post goes straight up and then the side posts attach into it. Versus this side, I have the two by four that runs all the way across, kind of add nice support throughout the system. And then I did these pieces on the outside to kind of box in the supports. You may be wondering why the heck this doesn't line up like the other side does. And that was because when you make this, you want to make sure you include the diameter of the plates you're going to be using. I overestimated using those plates over there. And I wanted to make sure that when this cable starts going up and down, that it's not swinging into the wall. So I actually built the structure a couple inches back compared to my squat rack. And that's why you get that ugly joint and I am not a fan of it. <laughs> Four dimensions, it is 29 inches from inside to inside on this side and 29 inches from inside to inside. And yours can be different, but I'm just gonna tell you that I think it's a good space, it's comfortable. When I'm reaching for the bar, there's no crampness. If I'm real close doing some push downs, I don't feel like the side posts are at my shoulders or anything. And then it also gives plenty of room for any plates that you're gonna use. I've used the 45 pound plates. They don't hit the wall and they don't hit the side posts when I get moving. The inside face of this post is also about one foot from the wall. If you're wondering what a good space to set these back is, I would go with a foot. And then just for safety measures, I've only hit this once, but I put this piece of plywood here just to keep the wall safe from the weights swinging into the drywall. Now on the bottom, the kind of framing system I did around the posts is just one two by four going across on the outside of the structure. So whatever you do for your gaps, you're gonna have to add a little bit for those two by fours. And then you're gonna have to get a little creative if you don't do the joints at the back or if you're doing your own standalone, it'll be a lot easier because you'll just have one, two, three, four posts and then you kind of go around them on the outside, build up, do the same on the top. For the top, it's the same with the exterior uh, two by four is going around the posts, but you're also going to want to add an interior post here Two by four here. Sorry for the focus and then one on that side too And the reason you're doing this is because that top piece of wood That I had to add when I used the two by four structures Needs to sit Evenly on top of two other pieces of wood in order for this the force from this bolt to transfer evenly from side to side. Otherwise you're gonna get a rotating moment and you don't want that in your structure. And then this way, this bolt is evenly pushing down on this piece of wood and this piece of wood. And then the force is halved going over here, force comes down, going over there, force comes down. And it creates a little bit safer of a structure for just using these kind of two by four pieces. Now, if you're going to use this style system to build the entire thing, you don't need to do this extra stuff because this bolt will go through this uh, four inch piece and then the weight will come through here and come through here. And with the added thickness of this four by four post versus that top two by four, it's going to gonna resist the bolts urge to kind of wiggle like this because it's gonna have that extra thickness that we talked about keeping it from moving side to side. So now that we've gone over kind of the wood structure, I'm just gonna get right into the uh, how I did the bolts. And that'll only take a quick second. So here is a quick glimpse at the eye bolts that I used. When you buy these, make sure you're buying something that's rated for a weight that you're gonna be using down here. So I'm not quite sure what I went with. I think this is a quarter inch. You can almost see here too, there's bend here because 
this pulling back and then no extra strength here. That's why you want to go with that 4x4 post instead of this cheap 2x4 system that I did. But anyways, eye bolt, nut, washer, goes through this piece of wood on top, washer, nut, a little extra on top. So it's hard to see unfortunately, but you can see why going through something this thick versus this thick would have been beneficial. In hindsight, I probably could have added and screwed another piece of two by four onto the one I used, then drilled through that, and then I would have had that extra um, strength. So if you wanna do that, that'll probably save you some time and money. So I have three of those eye bolt systems, one there, one there, and one down here. Next part, I'm just gonna go over the actual pulleys. One thing I learned from another video on this is that you don't want to cheap out, except I didn't learn because I went to Lowe's and I cheaped out, and they definitely add a lot of friction, and I guess you can just lower the weight, but if you got a big eagle like I do, it's kind of a punch in the gut, is what it is. We're working from home. This is the best we got. So very simple. For each pulley, we have our pulley and one of these clips, or whatever the hell these are called. but. This attaches here, this attaches here. This gives it kind of free reign and movement when you are pushing down. Gives it a little flexibility when you add that bottom attachment. You can see over here, this one's on a bit of an angle. This is on a bit of an angle. That wouldn't be possible, as possible, without this. So I've got one, two, and three of these pulleys. But I've got four of these clips. So remember that. Three pulleys if you want the bicep extension, but in total, four of these because you need this for the weight pin. All right, next main part, the cable. When you buy the cable, get the coated kind. Is that focusing? Get the coated kind, don't get the bare steel. Um, I've been told that the pulleys will eat at the steel and I think it's just a smoother pull on these cables. All the cables in your gym are braided or coated. So just get the coated, they're super cheap. I think it was like $20 for 30 feet. One thing to include in the cost of your build is you're gonna want to have something that can cut the cable. It's gonna be $20, $25 to buy the tool it's worth it, put it in your cost, because what happens is you get to Lowe's, you start buying stuff, you get all your materials, and you realize you gotta spend another $20 on the tool when you're already trying to save money. Include it in your cost, you're gonna need it. It'll make things so much easier. Because if you're like me, you'll try to buy the pre-cut lengths, which aren't gonna be what you want. Just get the 30 foot length. I think I went with 5 16 5 inch diameter and that's gonna give you more freedom to work with. So, so for the cable portion of this, I got, I think, 5 16th braided or coated cable, 30 feet of it, and then you're gonna want one of these eye pieces for each connection that you're gonna have. So if you're gonna do the full top bottom pulley system, that is one, two, three and four of those eye pieces and for each connection you should have minimum two i should have three of these kind of nuts that tie the cable on so what you do is you start with one end you fold the first part of cable back you get her clamped you get her hooked up and then when you're building this you're going to want to already have your pulleys in place and then you'll run your cable through, run your cable through, and then you'll pull down here, and that'll give you an idea of how long you're gonna wanna cut the next piece off at. You'll have a ton of cable left over, so what I did is I just kinda took a marker and marked where it was gonna be. The higher it is, the better, because you're gonna be pulling it off anyway, so you don't want it to be too low. 
but you bought 30 feet of cable, so it's not as stressful. Start with a little bit longer, cut it back as you need it. One tip that might help, I know I haven't talked about how I built it yet, but if you build this and hook it up, before you go through all this, you can get some tension on it and get a real good idea of how long you actually want the cable. So now that I've talked about the structure, the eyes, and the pulleys and cable, the next piece is the loading pin. This is the final piece of the pie. And depending on what you get, this is one of the more simple things in the build. So here is our DIY weight pin. It's all just conduit and I think electrical conduit pieces that I got from Lowe's. On the bottom here, I don't know the exact size, but it's a wall mount type thing, conduit thing. If you go to the section in Lowe's that has these, it's one of the first things you'll see. I think I'll try to link the video where someone showed me how to build this. This is just a one foot section of pipe. I believe this is three quarter inch pipe that comes out out of there and then goes up to this top piece, which I drilled through and then added this eye piece. So once again, wall mount, single piece of pipe that threads into it, end cap that threads into that piece of pipe. Now how I attach the end cap to this eye bolt, what I did is I drilled through the top here with the diameter of the eye bolt I got. I think this is probably a quarter inch maybe 5 16 you want to make sure you check the weight capacity of the pin that you're buying this structure is only as good as its weakest mo or weakest members and this is honestly probably where you're going to find the weakest parts is you need to make sure that all the weight you are pulling up is going through this end cap in this section so this bolt right here or this nut it's taking all of the force from your entire system. So you need to make sure that this is qualified to hold, I'd say safely up to 200 pounds. So you get your piece, you drill through the top of this end cap. Uh, pro tip, put it on this before you start drilling, then you can put your feet on the bottom and kind of hold it still while you drill through the end cap. So once that's done, you slide your eye bolt through you put this nut on, you're going to want to make sure you get one that's small enough that the nut can go inside the end cap, but also have room for the threads to go up there. And once you're done, you get your, you get this bolt in, you tighten this one down, focus please, you tighten that nut down on top of your end cap. And there you have it, a loading pin that can support the weight that you are gonna use for these push downs. I think this holds safely up to 200 pounds, I don't know. I figured I wasn't gonna be doing more weight than that on this little dinky home gym. I'd suggest going with this diameter because it's gonna be able to hold these smaller plates as well as the larger plates. With that end section on there, it'll keep the larger ones on, but with the skinnier piece coming up, it'll allow for these plates to go on there. All right, so I've showed the structure, the eyes, the cable, the pulleys, and the loading pin. Those are the main components where I kind of had to shop around YouTube and look for different videos to see how to do them. I hope this at least gives you an idea of what you want to do on your build. I know a step-by-step -step would have been better, but I just wasn't thinking about it at the time, but I figured maybe if I showed this, someone will get a good idea of what they want to do. With that being said, I'm going to put my phone on this shelf and just kind of show the system in progress. Now you're going to get some squeaking. Is that some WD-40? That's actually this bar that's doing all the squeaking. I bought a cheap one off Amazon. But you can see the loading pin holds up. And then you can kind of see the rocking motion, which is why we set it back away from the wall a little. And we have that piece of plywood there. If you look up, you can kind of see the pins, or the eye bolts flexing. That's why you really want to go with that four, four inch uh, support on those. I would suggest that over what I did. But overall, I think you get the picture. 
hook up this one real quick. You can see how quick it is to do the bicep swap, we'll call it. Make sure you tighten these all the way when you're doing them. Don't leave them open because it'll flex over time. It's meant to have the force go down both sides. Grab down here. And just like that, you want to make sure this is straight out. Sometimes those move. And just like that, we're curling. Alright guys, so I hope this video helps you. I know a lot of things on YouTube helped me. Um, maybe it's not an exact how-to, but maybe it gets your mind moving in the right direction. So anyways, thank you. Have a great day, and uh, let's hope the gyms open up because this DIY stuff is getting old. <laughs>